I have restarted today's webinar just to be sure we're not having any technical difficulties. Please let me know that you can hear me okay so we can proceed. Okay, thank you for verifying that you can hear me. I want to be sure that everyone can see my screen. Please let me know that you can see my screen so we can go ahead and begin the webinar. Perfect. Okay, so today I'm going to walk you through Deja Click and Alert Site. Deja Click is our in browser recorder, and Alert Site is our uh, performance monitoring application. It's a cloud based SaaS solution. And we'll go through the dashboard. We'll talk about reports, alerts, and monitor setup, and anything else that comes to mind. If you guys have any questions during the presentation, please let me know. We'll answer your questions. We can do some deep dives into individual use cases or scenarios, or if there's anything else you'd like to discuss, please let me know. It looks like we have a, only a few attendees today, which is great. It allows us to get a little bit more personal and get a little bit more into individual questions that you guys might have. Since today is the day before a holiday here in the United States, um, I didn't expect a whole lot of attendees, so I'm glad that we've got a couple. So um, here is Deja Click. I'm going to open that uh, up at the Deja Click website. This is dejaclick.alertsite.com. This is where you can download Deja Click. It's available for either Firefox or Chrome, and you can use either. The only difference is that in Firefox, it appears right here below my address bar, and in Chrome, it appears as a separate browser window. The functionality is exactly the same. The icons look very similar as well. And you can actually transfer scripts back and forth between Chrome and Firefox or vice versa, as long as the website you're recording on has no browser dependencies like user agent string matching or anything of that nature. Um, so if you're working with a team with a lot of people, they can work on whichever browser they'd prefer out of Firefox or Chrome, and there is no need for everybody to be using the same version or the same browser. So today I'm going to be using Firefox, but again, you can use Chrome if that is your preferred browser. I'm going to power on the Deja Click toolbar. You'll see that up at the top. There's a power button. Now, Deja Click is the first of its kind in Browser Recorder. A couple of other competitors have come along in recent years and have made their own browser plugin recorders, but Deja Click was actually the first of its kind to record transactions using a plugin for an actual browser rather than using a desktop application or a emulator-based recorder. We're actually recording transactions as you navigate the real web, recording those real calls and interacting with the website in the exact way that your customers would. That does make a big difference when you're monitoring something synthetically because you want your performance indicators and your metrics to be as on par with your customers' experiences as possible. So the SmartBear approach to this is actually twofold. One, we can record using that browser plugin recorder and get an actual uh, real interaction actually working with a real browser. And number two, we stand up real versions of Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Chrome and those will provide the most accurate possible mass, uh, information and metrics for the way your customers are experiencing your web or mobile sites or your APIs. Up here at the top of my Deja Click toolbar, you'll see I have controls. 
I have a record button, a stop button, a pause button, and a play button. And those would behave just about the way that you'd expect. Next to my record button, I have a drop down arrow, which indicates that I can record from multiple different types of devices. Normal recording is a standard web browser, but I also have options for Apple iPads, iPhones, Samsung, and Google phones, as well as some tablets. So I'm going to press the record button to start my recording. You'll notice the record button gets grayed out and my stop button comes active. I'm going to press enter here in my address bar to log that URL into Deja Click. And now I'm free to, ac to access the web and interact with this website just as a customer would. Now this is a definitely a great way to follow a business critical transaction like a login or logout process or if you're working with an e-commerce site to perform your check-in, check-out process, search through your web page, search through your inventory, anything that is critical to the way you do business and that you want to be sure that your customers can access. Uh, looks like we have a question about Deja Click using storing passwords. Yes, uh, what I'm actually going to record today, I'm going to log into the forum and I'm going to record a, me logging in, asking a question, and logging out. And it will encrypt my password within the script itself. So it is a very secure way to store that data, but it does stay within that script so that you'll be able to log in and log out. Uh, one stipulation, you definitely want to be sure that the credentials you provide to Alert Site are credentials that your de development team has approved for synthetic monitoring. There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, you'll want to be sure that there won't be any CAPTCHAs thrown in there. Uh, a CAPTCHA is a tool for getting around synthetic, usually bots or spammers, but it will prevent synthetic testing as well because there is no real way around a CAPTCHA. It's meant to stop bots or synthetic traffic, and it does. And unfortunately, synthetic testing is synthetic traffic as well. So you'll definitely want to be sure that your development team won't enable CAPTCHA or that type of security measure on whatever user ID you're using. Another thing you'll want to be sure is that there won't be problems with concurrent sessions or that you have your tests spread out enough that you're not going to run into any concurrency so it won't run into conflict. Other than that, you can absolutely monitor login, logout processes, searching, or anything else of that nature. So I'm on my forum page. What I'm going to do is sign in. I'm going to enter my credentials in the pop-up box. I'm going to press the sign in button. I know my sign-in is successful because I see the, my login name here, Smart Bear Amber, up here up at the top. So I'm going to actually go to this magnifying glass icon on my toolbar and click on that to open the, the validation box. I'm going to mouse over the phrase Smart Bear Amber and click OK. And I'm going to close my validation window. Now what I've done is I've told Deja Click that if that word Smart Bear Amber doesn't appear on this page to fail the test. That's a way that I can be absolutely sure my login process was successful. And I can have as many different validations as I want within my scripts. It's definitely a, biz a good business practice to have at least one in your script. So I'm going to ask a question here in my question bar. I'm going to say, what is alert site? And send that question in. Okay. And now I'm going to sign out. And once again, I'm going to click on that magnifying glass icon just to be sure the word sign in appears up here at the top as proof that my login process was correct. I'm going to close that validations box and press the stop button to indicate that I've finished recording. Deja Click pops up and tells me that my recording is completed and 12 events have been recorded. Now I'm ready to go ahead and play back. So while I'm playing back my script, you'll notice that interaction with the website appears as a green bar around anything DejaClick is using. So we clicked on that forums link and there's a green box around that to indicate that. So you can watch what DejaClick is doing while you're watching the playback. Here we go, signing into the forum. This is the exact same process that I went through when I recorded the scripts. And it only took me a couple of moments to record that script. 
even complex scripts with Deja Click are very quick and very easy because you're actually recording live from the web. So you don't have to worry about custom scripting or trying to script around things. It's a very simple, very straightforward process and it's so, so quick and simple that you don't need dedicated testers to do this. Maintaining tests, re-recording tests, changing tests or scripts is a very quick, very straightforward and very simple process. So my script has replayed back successfully. That's excellent. Let's move on to the next step of our process. That's testing on demand using this little lightning bolt icon. So I'm going to press that icon. It's going to pop up and ask me for my username and password. Then it's going to ask me where I want to test from. I can choose Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer, or Chrome. And I can choose any one of those three. And we're going to stand up a real version of that browser. So let's use Firefox and Atlanta, Georgia for my tests, and then I'm going to click test. What we're doing is we're actually uploading that test I just created to the Atlanta, Georgia node, standing up Firefox, and running that test back from a real version of Firefox in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to get real performance metrics based on how that test ran, and I'm going to get some tools that will allow me to refine my script further. So, so far we've talked about Deja Click, recording, validation, and playing back your scripts. Are there any questions so far? Okay, unfortunately, oh, sorry, it looks like we have a question about using Deja Click with Firefox or with Internet Explorer. Unfortunately, Microsoft doesn't really open their source code and doesn't allow developer-based plugins, so we aren't able to add uh, Deja Click to, for use with Internet Explorer itself. You can play back on Internet Explorer, you'll just have to record in Chrome or Firefox. Are there any other questions about recording or playing back a script? Okay, it looks like our report has completed, our test has completed successfully, and we have a report available here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the detail report, and this is going to give me my action detail report. This has a list of all four steps within my test. You'll see those here with timestamp information, and there's some response time metrics over here. We've also got a list of statuses, or status indicators. Um, those status indicators are twofold. They're color-coded, first of all, so you'll see green for OK, yellow for warning, and red for error, as well as number-coded if there's an error message. If you see a number here that you don't recognize, you can click on the status indicated in blue at the top. It's going to open a help page. It has a list of every possible status code you'll ever encounter in an alert site, as well as if you click it, it'll open a full text about exactly what the definition of that error message means. Okay. To the left side of each step, you'll also see links for the full page and event detail reports for each step individually. Let's take a look at the full page detail report first. So our full page detail report is a waterfall chart of every object that was encountered during this step of our test execution, and it's compared up against DOM load and page load indicated by those blue lines and red lines you see on my page. Um, so let's see here, we can see some objects that took a little bit longer in content time than, than others. You can take a look at that and do some research on that. We've also got a list of every URL that we encountered while we were running that test. That's information that can be very useful for refining our script and enhancing it and making it optimal. So I'm going to click on the green checkbox icon at the top of my screen. That's going to open up my script itself here on the left-hand side of my page. You see there's all four of my event steps. I'm going to go down to the Properties tab and change my display level from Basic to Advanced. Here you'll see I have a bunch of different options for things that I can do to enhance my script. What I'm going to show you today are URL exclusions. So what I can do, if I'm using uh, an analytics tool, in this case SmartBear is using Google Analytics, you'll see that right there, that's where that call is made. I'll right click on that URL from my, action, from my detail page. I'll copy my link location and I'm going to add a URL exclusion and paste that URL in there. Now I have two options for how I want to treat that URL. I can ignore it, which means the call will still be made, however we won't actually collect metrics and that won't count against you for test failures or timeouts, or I can block it. Blocking it means that that call will never be made. So in this case, since it's a Google Analytics call and I don't want to skew my marketing department's data by using synthetic testing with that URL included, I'm actually going to click block and click OK. Now you'll notice that that Google Analytics URL is added in here. 
And what that means is that next time I run this test, that Google Analytics call will never be made and my marketing department will be happy. Or anybody else who's using that Google Analytics tool will be happy that I'm not skewing their, their metrics and their data synthetically. This can also be useful for uh, third-party content that's slow performing and causing your tests to fail, or that's just making your results look bad, taking too long to load, anything of that nature. And it can allow you to either block that content so it doesn't d delay your, um, so that it doesn't fail your tests. You can ignore it so that you're still making those calls, but that they're not going to impact your metrics and your data. And you make the cleanest possible version of your tests. The other thing I want to show you as far as advanced script optimization features are content views. So I'm going to open my content views box and press add. I'm going to create a content view. And a content view is a way to view content in the reporting engine of alert site itself. So I'm going to call one Google. I'm going to click on my green plus sign, which filters everything by domain. Or you can go a little bit more granular and look at URLs. So you can look at every domain that was encountered during this step of the test execution or every single URL. In this case, I called it Google. So I'm going to add all my Google URLs in there. I'm going to add another content view. I'll call that one core and add the smart bear. So let's add my smart bear URLs in there. Okay, now what that's going to do is on the front end, so when my test is running, alert site's going to view it as one execution, so you won't get any additional measurement fees or anything of that nature. It won't consume any extra test runs. But on the back end, our reporting engine is going to view this as two different sections. They're going to be separated out. And what this allows you to do is really keep track of any third-party vendors you're using that have different SLAs, and you want to be sure that they're meeting those SLAs with you. Another thing that you can use this for is separating out your, your metrics by business process. So, excuse me. So if you have a different team that's responsible for your front end versus your back end, or they're responsible for certain pieces of the website itself, you can separate the content and send them reports that are catered towards exactly what they're responsible for without having to data mine and look for the additional data, spend your time figuring out which is what, you'll be able to view it automatically. And that can really be a good time-saving measure. So now that our script is optimized, I'm going to go ahead and close out that script bar. I'm also going to close out our different, um, the event, the full page detail here. And let's take a look at the event detail. Now the event detail is a, a sort of miniature waterfall of just that action. So here you see there's our, our one action displayed as a waterfall. And again, you see those statuses, some metrics about that. And I can drill down even further into that full page detail and get that full waterfall chart if I choose to. So that is just the metrics that we can get from an on-demand instant test. I haven't actually uploaded anything to alert site yet, but already you can see the wide amount of usable data that you're able to obtain. So far, we've talked about recording a test. We talked about adding validations to a test we've recorded. We talked about script optimization using the detailed reports we got from testing on demand and the type of metrics that those on-demand tests provide. Are there any questions about anything else I've discussed so far or anything else related to synthetic or performance monitoring? Okay. Going to go ahead and close out all these extra windows here just to keep my desktop nice and uncluttered. And let's go take a look at alert site itself. So here is the alert site console. This is the dashboard. This is the site you'll be greeted with when you first sign in to alert site. As such, it's very customizable so that you can view just the information that you want to view and nothing further. Um, here I have the dashboard viewed as a list of tiles. You can see those tiles right there. I do also have the option to view it as a grid or a list view. The information for both of these is basically the same. Uh, both display the name of your monitor, so you see that up at the top, an indication about which type of monitor it is based on that icon. There is a last time of last performance uh, right up here at the top, response time. You'll also see a history of performance and availability, and those can be viewed by the last 24 hours or 7 or 30 days as indicated by this 
checkbox up here in the right hand corner. You'll also see the running interval, so this one is five minutes, and the time of the last successful test run, which was 11.20 a.m. Eastern Time today. The one difference between using the tiles or the list is that if I use the tiles, a single click brings up a submenu where I can run a test on demand. With the list view, I'd actually have to drill into the summary screen of the test itself in order to kick off that on-demand test. There will be a feature coming sometime soon and a modification to the way the list view works so that you'll be able to test on demand from that as well. But for now, the, the tile view is the only way to test on demand from the dashboard. So I did accidentally skip over one section. Once you've finished your script, you do want to upload it by clicking on this blue box. Click on the Upload Recording section and then give your monitor a name, choose your running interval, and press OK. Now, I'm not going to do that today. It does take about seven to eight minutes to get initial data, so we'll just look at some of the data I've already got collected by the monitors running in my account. But that is the process that you would use to upload your scripts to Alert Site. So once I've got some monitors up and running in my Alert Site console, what I can do is I can choose how I want to view those monitors. By default, we, we display everything we call worst to first. So if you have monitors in failure or error status, those will be displayed before anything in good status. So you'd see those indicated by red or yellow instead of green, and they appear first in your default dashboard. We also have ways for you to filter or sort or create views for what you want to see. I can use this filter button up at the top, and I can choose to view groups monitors, I can choose to view web monitors, API monitors, or mobile monitors, or I can choose to view status good or bad. I can save my views, save my filters as a view, and then I can swap back and forth and decide what it is I'd like to view in the future. Whatever I set as my last view, that's what's going to be the default the next time that I log in. So if I'm only concerned about my monitors and failure status, I can create a filter give it a, a name, choose to view just the bad monitors or the bad status, and then when I log in every time, that's only what I'll see. If there aren't any monitors in bad status, my desktop will appear blank. And I can have any number of filters or views. I can swap back and forth between them by clicking Select a View, and you'll have your, your different options pop up, and you'll be able to choose which option you'd like. So far, we talked about recording and uploading scripts. We talked about script optimization. We talked about adding a validation to your script. We also talked about playing a test back and testing on demand and the type of metrics that that provides. And we talked about the dashboard, the two different options for viewing the dashboard and ways to create views and filters. Are there any questions about anything we've discussed so far? Moving on, up in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see this blue button with a white plus sign. That's what we call the Create button. By pressing this button, you'll have access to, to create anything that you can create with an alert site. So you can create monitors, and we have options for web, mobile, and API. A web monitor, I can choose to do just an up-down monitor, so like a knock on the door of any single URL. Or I can use Deja Click to create a web performance monitor of a full transaction workflow. For API monitors, we can do that same just knock on the door, up, down option for a single endpoint, or you can use one of SmartBiz's other tools called SOAP UI to record an API test and then upload that script to Alert Site to monitor that API transaction end to end. As far as mobile goes, we have the option that I showed you, but there's also an integration between Alert Site and Perfecto Mobile to run your tests using their, their mobile lab. Other than creating monitors, I can create groups, and a group will allow me to view multiple monitors at the same time. Here you see I've got two groups created, and that's indicated by the fact that there's no monitor type icon up here, and it, also by the fact that I've got three monitors assigned to this group in the lower left-hand corner and one monitor assigned to this group. So I've got a monitor for my Deja Click monitors, or I've got, excuse me, I've got a group for my Deja Click monitors, as well as for my API monitors. And I can view that if I want to drill in here very quickly. I can view this in a glance so I can see how those Deja Click monitors are performing without drilling down into each one individually. 
You can have as many different mon monitors as you'd like in a group, and they can be assigned to multiple groups. You can have as much overlap as you'd like. I've seen uh, different users group monitors by geographic region, by business practice, by the type of monitor, or by certain credentials, whatever makes sense to you. Now, the, the AppDex score you see up at the top, that's the Application Performance Index. It's actually a third-party measurement. It's created by AppDex.org, and it's an industry standard for customer satisfaction with a website. The highest score is one, the lowest score is zero. So the, the basics behind that are, there is a very complex algorithm, you can read more at AppDex.org, but the basic idea is that out of one, out of one, of successful out of one user one successful visit so obviously one would be the, the best possible score you want one user to have one successful visit and the lower that score the less satisfied that customer is you'll also see before that below that line rather you see a full list of availability so here we see we're 97.6 percent available the list of monitors that I have here here's my app decks trending so I can see how my monitors are performing and below that, we have a global view, so I can see all over the world how my AppDex performance is working. It looks like everybody is green except for, I think that's Cairo. Yep, Cairo, Egypt right there you see is yellow. And if I scroll down, I'll be able to see, it looks like everybody else is either 0.99 or 1.0 except for Cairo. So I might want to do some investigation into what's happening there. If I go back to my dashboard, the last thing I'll be able to create are views. We talked about that earlier, creating views or filters to view how you'd like to look at your monitors in the dashboard. Let's go ahead and take a look at monitor configuration and talk a little bit about that. Before we do, are there any questions about the dashboard or about group functionality? Okay, so let's take a look at the monitor configuration options here. This is where I'll actually be pulled after I upload a Deja Click script, and it'll have me go through some configuration options. So I'll choose how often I want that test to run, if I have any timeouts. We have several different monitoring modes, which will allow you to choose how you want our monitors to run. If you'd like those to verify you, uh, whether or not the test is failing. Um, Global Verify is a great option. What it'll do is it'll kick off your test once. If we encounter a failure, it'll kick the test off a second time immediately from that same node. And if we encounter a failure again, it'll kick that test off from some other node somewhere else in the world to be sure that there's a legitimate issue and we notify you of a problem rather than it being a system problem or an issue with one isolated site. We do also have options for round robin, SLA, multipop, and primary, which will just let you know whenever that we encounter an issue. You can also choose to rotate your locations or have multiple locations for every test run. And whether or not you'd like to capture on error any type of an issue. We'll actually provide you with screen captures as well as headers and HTTP information if there's a failure on one of your tests. In the advanced section will let you get a little bit more granular with uh, object alerts, failures, transaction traces, and how you'd like user experience metrics to be reflected. The location section allows you to determine which locations you'd like to have your test run from. And you can separate those out by geographic area, or you can view all of them at once and just use check marks to indicate which ones you'd like to run from. Last but not least, we have the alert section. Alerts allow you to define performance alerts or availability alerts for your website or for your script, and you can choose which way you want to run those. If you want them dynamic or static, if you'd like to have those based on a, a last 10 minutes or longer times for averages, you can also choose step level alerting. Step level alerting will allow you to receive alerts only on specific steps of your transaction. So if you have a business critical step, like a logout process or a checkout process at the end of your monitor, and that's the one you're really concerned about, you can choose to be alerted just when that step encounters a failure instead of the test in general. Any questions about alerting or monitor configuration or anything else we've discussed so far? Okay, moving on, let's take a look at the type of information that our monitor provides. 
From the summary view, I'll see some basic information about my monitor on the left-hand side. The name of this monitor is Deja Click Chrome. It's a web browser monitor running every five minutes from these locations. I can also view beside that the status of the last run, the last response time, and the time since my last error. Beside that, I'll see a summary of availability and history, and again, I can view that by the last 24 hours or seven or 30 days. Now, these graphs are interactive, so I see a little bit of a failure there. I can actually drill into that, and I can zoom in or zoom out, and I can view that failure. I can view that same detailed information that we looked at for that instant test, but I can view that for an individual test run. So if I view my detail report here, see a pop-up of exactly what that failure was. There's my error indicated there. There's my status. So I'll see exactly where that was, and I can help diagnose those problems and work on troubleshooting there. Okay. Below that, we have a summary of performance history. You can view that as an average or view it by location. Viewing by location can really help you figure out which locations are performing better than others and which locations might have a bit of an issue as far as network or maybe content delivery time. We collect a variety of metrics, but by default, we display full page. If you'd like to view something else, if there's something else that's more important to you, you can choose that here. So if, for instance, redirect time, you could view that instead. And again, I can zoom in and zoom out on the screen as I wish. Now at the bottom of my page, I have a full run history, so I can sort, filter, and search on information for each individual test run. And I can also schedule a blackout. I can schedule a recurring blackout or a one-time blackout, maybe if I have um, maintenance or something of that nature on my website, or maybe in order to save measurements, I don't want to have my monitors run overnight. That way I can choose peak times or I can choose off times and I can distribute exactly how I want that to work. Okay, so do we have any questions about monitors in general or recording a script, playing back a script, the dashboard, or anything else I've discussed so far? Okay, moving on. We have already discussed group functionality, so I'm going to move right to SLAs. SLA, or service level agreement, allows you to dis to create performance thresholds that you indicate for your monitors. I can say that in this case, I've chosen my currency converter uh, monitor, and I've decided to add a SLA that says I want my 99% availability objective and 15 seconds for my response time. Now, once you set up an SLA, Alert Site's actually going to work with historical information on that monitor to determine how compliant you are based on the time frame you have selected in the upper right-hand corner. In this case, my objective is 99, and I am not available 99% of the time. It looks like I'm only 95.83% of the time. Looks like I had some failures right there. So I'm not compliant with this SLA in this case. For response time, it looks like my average response time is 1.14 seconds, so I am compliant there. And I can also see a full response time history for that same time and in frame indicated right above here. I do, under the SLA submenu, have an option for op periods and exclusions. I can use that to determine when I want that SLA to be effective. Now, that's not the monitor itself. That's just the SLA you have overlying that monitor. So maybe you know that you have particularly slow um, response times during peak times of the day, and you wouldn't like that to count towards your SLA. You can set an exclusion here that will tell the uh, alert state system not to have that SLA in effect during that time period. Or conversely, if you want to be sure that your SLAs are being met only during peak business times, you can add operating periods to tell the alert site when that, op when that SLA should be in effect. The error section is a great summary of all the errors that have occurred in your account at any one time. And again, you can change that time frame in the upper right-hand corner, and you view it by the last 24 hours or 7 or 30 days. So here I can sort, I can filter, and I can search. And that gives me sort of an overall overview of how many errors have been incurred, which locations, and when. Alert site also has, 
has uh, charting capabilities. That's a great resource for troubleshooting. If you have a specific issue with a monitor or maybe a customer has called you to let you know that there's a problem, a uh, customer will let you know that there was a problem at a certain period. You can use the charting section to explore that. And that way you can choose your, your monitors. So maybe those business critical processes that your customers might have been complaining about. Choose the locations that you are monitoring from or maybe locations or close localities to where they were experiencing an issue. Choose your time frame, relative or exact, and choose the attributes for your chart. So maybe you only want to view fa failures or errors. You can also choose to group by monitor or by location and display hour of day, week, month, however you'd like to do that. Click apply and it creates a very dynamic version of my chart. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can view any metrics that I'd like. We collect a, a wide variety. So I can collect multiple metrics here. And I can choose to view these as a scatter or a line chart. Okay, and that is the charting section of my website. It looks like we do have a question. We had a late joinee. Yes, the recording will be available. I will definitely make sure you get that information. Okay, so moving on, the next thing we're going to discuss is reporting. So we have a wide variety of out-of-the-box performance reports. We have everything from detail reports to regional reports. If you have SLAs configured, we have detail reports for the SLAs as well, or a summary report there. You can also view all of your user experience metrics in this full page report over time. There's also usage reports, notifications, and outage detail reports as well. Today, let's take a look at a detail report. I will choose my Deja Click Chrome monitor. And choose my locations below there. I can also set my time range. Now the time range is important because if I choose exact, I'll be able to run this report once. That'll give me some information on a specific event. If I choose relative, I'll be able to run that report on a recurring basis and have it emailed to me automatically if I'd like. Let's choose yesterday. And the reporting options at the bottom of the page will differ based on the type of report you have selected. I have a couple of different options available down here. I'll add that report details section and we'll go ahead and run our report. Our report is being generated and now I have a wide variety of ways that I can access that report. I can view it instantly as HTML or PDF. I can email it as HTML or PDF. I can choose to download it as CSV, TSV, XML or HTML. Here I can schedule my report to run on a recurring basis and I can choose a couple of options about how I'd like that to work. I can view that as HTML, text or PDF or CSV. I can also choose to have a link to the report or have the report embedded in the email itself. Give my report a name. This name is going to be the subject line of your report. And you can also create a distribution list right within Alert Site. There is a bulk add feature down at the bottom, so you can just paste in uh, email addresses copied and pasted from Outlook. We do also give you access to a reporting API. So if you have a, a dashboard or an analytics tool or something of that nature that allows for a web services data feed, you can actually use that API we give you right there. And there is further information at help.alertsite.com that will assist you in configuring that so that you'll get that information on a recurring automatic basis and you won't have to sign into AlertSite to get reporting data all the time. So for today, I'm going to take a look at that report in HTML just to take a look at the type of information that detail report provides. Here you see that for that time frame for this test, we were 100% available. And I can view my user experience times, DNS, connect, redirect, etc., down here on a chart. I can also choose to view that as a bar chart instead. Below the chart, we have a transaction load analysis that gives us the average, minimum, maximum, and standard deviation time for all of the metrics listed here. I also have full page distribution and individual page time per test. I've also got a summary that tells me I had 26 test executions during this time frame. My status for all of those was zero, and I can click on that blue status heading to pull up a help document with a list of every possible status you'll encounter. And if I click on the headings there, you'll see a, a detailed explanation of exactly what that status means. 
during my test execution, I had zero errors, zero warnings, and zero notifications. I can also access even further detail here. You'll see a wide variety of information for every test execution. You'll see timestamp statuses, response times, DNS times. And I can also access even more information by clicking on the icons to the left-hand side. If there were any failures during this time, you'd see that little camera icon appear here, and I'd be able to view a capture on error report for any of those failures. I can view transaction detail, event detail, or diagnostic information for every one of those executions. Take a quick look at the diagnostic detail. Okay, it looks like that didn't want to pull up for me, so let's try uh, another one. Okay, while that's loading, I can also expand any of these test runs to get further information on each individual step of that test. So I can get further information on how my test was executing during that time frame. And there's my event detail report you see for that. I can view a snapshot report which contains information about that test execution. So we'll pull that up and you can see that snapshot for just that test run. Okay. Are there any questions about reporting or any, inform any other information that I've discussed so far? Okay, last but not least, I'd like to talk about alerts. Alerting is the last section we have to discuss today. It's very important to us here at SmartBear because it's actually in the alert site name. And this is definitely an area where we've put a lot of focus. So you'll want to start by creating a new recipient. And recipient in the ad recipient field is a little bit of a, a misnomer. So what I'd want to do is actually the recipient box here really indicates contact method. So if I were going to say something called Amber Desk, put in my desk phone, I'd want to put in my phone number for my desk here. And then you'll choose the mode. And we have a variety of different um, options for contacting you in the instance of a failure. We can email you, we can text you, we can actually call you and leave you an automated voicemail or an automated phone call. We can also work through post and SNMP traps. We can send you an AOL instant message, or we work with Splunk and PagerDuty as well for integration there. Okay, it looks like we have a question. Um, what about performance testing in Load UI and Alert Site? Okay, so performance testing is not currently a capability of Alert Site itself. If you're looking for web performance testing, we do have an option through professional services for, for that information. There's also another SmartBear tool called Load Complete that can work on load testing for you. Um, there is an integration between SOAP UI or Ready API and Alert Site, but that would only be for functional testing, not load testing. Okay, moving on. Once you've got your recipients configured, you can go in and edit information. You can also see at a glance if you're receiving performance alerts, availability alerts. You can configure blackouts if you're going on vacation or if there's a holiday, like in the U.S. tomorrow is a, a holiday, so I definitely want to schedule a blackout so I don't get text messages during my holiday. I can also go in, once I've got a recipient created, and determine thresholds for how I want to receive alerts. I've seen a lot of customers do this and have sort of a level one, level two, and level three recipient for themselves. And what they can do is they can say, after one error, send me an email. After 10 errors, change the thresholds here. So after 10 errors, call me. After 20 errors, call me at a different number, or send me a page, or go through pager duty. And that way you can be sure that someone will be paying attention and someone will get the alert if it's an escalating issue. And that you're not being called maybe when you're asleep or, or having your on-call team dispatched if there's a single error at 2 o'clock in the morning. You can be sure that it's a real error and that you're really acting on it when there's an actual problem and maybe not a website hiccup or a temporary 404. There's also fine-tuning information for performance alerts, so you can choose exactly how those work. And below the alert recipient section, we have an alert log, so you can view all the alerts that went out, who received those, and when. Looks like I haven't had any alerts in the last 24 hours, so that's good. And last but not least, we have recipient groups. 
Now, recipient groups is a fairly new feature to Alert Site, and it allows you to really sort of fine tune and granularize who should receive alerts and when. I have a group configured here called Demo. And what I've done is I've gone in and created this sort of like from an ops perspective. So I've chosen two monitors that I want to receive notifications on. I've chosen my recipient, that's me and my email address right there. And I've also chosen the error type. So in this case, I only want to receive alerts when there's a connection failure, TCP, or when there's an invalid response from server or no response from the server. So I can choose which type of alerts to send emails out to me. And I can choose any, I can choose all, and this allows me to really fine tune the way those alerts are dispatched and how I receive them. Okay, so that is alert site in a nutshell. Today we talked about Deja Click, our in-browser recorder. We talked about recording a script, optimizing that script, and the type of information an instant test will provide for you. Uploading that script into the alert site console. We talked about the dashboard, the ways to create different types of tests, the ways you can view the dashboard, sort and filter your monitors. We talked about the summary screen for the monitors and the type of information that provides, as well as how to drill down even further. We talked about group functionality. We talked about creating SLAs for your monitors, the errors, charting, and reporting sections, and how to create reports and have those emailed to you on a recurring basis. We talked about alerts, the alert log, and how to create a recipient group. Does anyone have any questions about anything I've discussed so far, anything else relating to alert site or smart bear? Okay, it looks like I'll give you back about 10 minutes of your day. Again, this recording will be available. Uh, and please let us know through direct contact. We have a Twitter, we have a Facebook, and there's a lot of contact methods available on our website as well. If you have any questions or if you'd like a trial or a personalized demo. Thank you so much for your time today. And if you're in the United States, I hope you have a wonderful holiday tomorrow.